In this tutorial, we will learn how to bend objects like these in Blender. You might already know that we can bend an object by using a simple deform modifier. But if you are new to Blender, you might find it little difficult at times to control this modifier, and the bend angle may not work correctly. So we'll take some suitable examples and discuss how to use this modifier to bend any object. Let us start with a blank new file. We'll flatten this cube, and then we'll enlarge it in the X dimension, so that we can bend it. So let us change the Z scale factor to 0.1. And then we'll increase the X scale factor. Maybe we can change this to 6. Now one important step. We need to ensure that the object has enough number of subdivisions along the direction in which we want to bend it. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add a subdivision surface modifier. Switch over to the simple option. And then increase the levels, maybe to 4. Or we can go for 5, for a very smooth bending. Now, let us minimize this modifier, and then, add one, simple deform modifier. Switch over to the bend option. Before we discuss about anything else, let us first focus on this field called, origin. You can use this modifier even without an origin, but it always helps if you use an origin object, in order to control the direction of the bend correctly, it's very useful. And we can use any kind of object as an origin. So we'll add one, empty object because it remains hidden in the render output. And we can use any type of empty. Let us go for a sphere. It is very important that this empty must have the same location as that of our target object. For example, let's say our target object has changed its location. It has got some displacement like this. So we need to bring the empty as well, to the same location, or to the origin of the target object. This object has a location transformation, 303. So the empty must have the same location transformation. We are done with the location of the empty. We'll now bend this object, so select the object, and go to the Modifiers tab. In the simple deform modifier in the origin field, we have to select the empty object. Here, this angle determines how much we want to bend, and this axis determines the direction of the bending. But as you can see, even if we change this bending axis, we do not really get the correct bending style that we wanted to create. That is when we need to rotate the empty object to get the correct result. We need to manipulate these rotation angles suitably for the empty. Let us first change this X rotation field to 90 degrees. And we can see that the object is now correctly bent in the direction that we really wanted. You can change this rotation angle in the positive or in the negative direction to create an upward or a downward bending. So the obvious question that we can ask is how to know which angle to be changed for the empty. Actually there is a complex relation among this rotation the local axis of the target object, and this bending direction that we want to achieve. But instead of trying to get into all those complexities, I think the fastest way is to use a trial and error method with these rotation angles. You just need to change any one of them to 90, so change the first one and check if it yields the desired result, otherwise change this to 90 degrees, or you can also change this, one of them will surely work. And for each of them, you need to test with each bending axis in the modifier section for the target object. It might sound little hacky, but even Blender officially thinks that these are not very intuitive, so the trial and error method is actually not that bad. And you may not need to change these angles always, many times it will work correctly without any manipulation. So, we have already seen that we can change this angle field to change the bend amount. And if we change the bend axis here, we can get another style of bending in a different direction. Like before, we can change this bend angle here as well to bend the object either upward or downward like this. Now, we will look into the next thing. So expand this section called Restrictions. We have two fields called Limits which you can use in order to restrict the bend on any one side of the object. So if you increase this lower limit, you can see that the bend effect is limited to this side, and this side remains just flat. And instead of that, if you change this higher limit, the bending will be restricted to the other end of the target object. You can also keyframe these limits to animate them over time. And if you want you can also use both of them together to create a bend profile like this. You can change the curvature of this bend by changing this angle. Let us change this to perfect 180. And here, let us use 0.3 for the lower limit, and 0.7 for the higher limit. 
As a result, we'll get this U-shaped bend for our object. Let us take one more example. We'll bend this flute which is a cylindrical object. You'll notice that this object is not aligned to any particular axis, it is in an inclined position, since it has got these rotation values. Let's see how to bend this object in this position. Just like before, we'll first add one empty. We need to move this empty, to the center or the origin point of this object. So select this object, then go to the object menu, and under snap, select cursor to selected. We'll get the 3D cursor moved to this origin point. Now select the empty object, and from the object menu, under snap, select, selection to cursor. As a result, the empty will be now located at the same origin point as that of our target object. Then select this object. Go to the modifiers tab, and add one, simple deform modifier. Switch over to the bend tab. In the origin field, we'll select the empty. Although the flute is now somewhat bent, you can see that there are abnormal distortions at these ends, so this does not really give us the correct result. Even if you change the bend axis, the distortion is still present, and moreover, the bending itself is also not perfect. We have already added enough subdivisions, so that is also not an issue. The problem is, this object has got some rotation transformations like this, and we need to copy the same to the empty. We have already copied the locations here from the target object, now these rotations should also be copied from this object. So take a note of these values. And then we have to change these fields. Instead of manual edit, you can also add a copy location and a copy rotation constraint to the empty to automate this step. Now let us select the flute, and in the modifier section, if we select the y-axis, we'll see that the bend is now perfect, without any distortions. You can change this bend angle, as you wish. The object is now perfectly bent. And no distortions at all. So this way, you can bend any object, even if it has location or rotation changes. And in the restrictions, you can use the limit values, in order to give it any kind of shape like this. So this is what we finally get. That's all for today. I hope you now find it easy to control the bending operation, in a simple deform modifier. Please let us know if you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.